I'm here to talk about something that's more traditional. Uh, so you can see the title of my presentation. Uh, my uh, uh, colleague, John Hard, uh, he couldn't make it to uh, join me in this presentation. But you heard Kevin earlier talking about how uh, durability uh, is an issue for various types of culverts. Uh, and in Ohio uh, and uh, other uh, states, areas in the U.S., we have many uh, corrugated metal pipes that are serving roadways, and uh, their inverts eventually uh, degrade uh, severely uh, due to uh, environmental factors. Uh, and uh, we recently completed a special study in Ohio to look into the structural aspect of inbar paving. You know, that's one traditional approach that you can take to restore the deteriorated inbar region of uh, culvert structure. Uh, so this approach is especially attractive if the culvert structure has almost no major defects, issues, above its inbar region, and the uh, soil cover is relatively deep, so it's not easy to do a complete replacement. Uh, but anyway, uh, we all know that uh, culvert hydraulics can be restored when you pave the bottom, right? But what about culvert's structural integrity, structural performance? Uh, is that also somewhat restored when you uh, pave the inbar? Uh, and uh, there hasn't been any major studies done on this uh, structural aspect of deteriorated uh, metal culverts treated with inbar uh, paving uh, method. So uh, uh, we uh, conducted this study and uh, uh, many uh, uh, state DOTs have been using this rehabilitation method, and uh, some of them have developed standard drawings, specifications, and ODA uh, is one of those highway agencies. Uh, ODA has CMS item 611.11 uh, to address field paving of new or existing uh, conduits. Uh, and uh, this research project we did uh, had uh, several components to make it very comprehensive. And uh, first we did an extensive literature review. And uh, as we predicted, we did not find uh, any major prior study done on this uh, subject area. We found a few relevant uh, studies. Uh, Canadian team led by Dr. Ian Moore uh, looked into the structural performance of uh, metal, deteriorated metal culverts treated with uh, cementitious uh, liners. Spray, spray on cementitious liners. And uh, so they had uh, exhumed or uh, artificially deteriorated metal culverts, and they tested uh, these uh, culvert structures in the ground with and uh, without uh, the spray on liner treatment. And uh, this is no surprise, but they saw, uh, oops. Uh, the pipe structure uh, behaving uh, as a more rigid structure after being treated with a spray on liner. Uh, especially the bending stiffness uh, increased tremendously. And uh, the pipe with a three inch thick liner provided stiffer responses to the load than the pipe treated with a two inch thick liner. And then, uh, I don't think Shad is here, but okay, so when, when we were getting ready to perform our research, 
study. Uh, Dr. Sargian, who just gave a talk, uh, his team was getting ready to do a special field testing uh, for a hydraulic engineering on call project for ODA. Uh, so they found uh, a severely deteriorated uh, corrugated metal pipe arch in Muskingum County. And they wanted to do the load testing of the structure. And uh, he was so worried that I may not be able to get good data in my project. So he kept saying, I remember, you know, I'm going to give you uh, some data that you can at least use in your project. So what he and his team did, they went out to this uh, uh, culvert site and uh, they paved its inver only on the downstream side. So he had the uh, untreated upstream side and the treated downstream side. And they did the load testing uh, on both sides to find out the impact of uh, paving the Im imba. And uh, uh, they do, did some instrumentations. And uh, they found out that uh, the caliber section uh, without uh, the imba paving was more flexible. Uh, and uh, concreting the imba made the thrust uh, that's a force reaction within the culvert wall. Response more magnified and a bending moment response uh, somewhat reduced. And also, imba paving caused the structural responses to become more symmetric about the vertical center line of the culvert. Uh, and then I th another conclusion I didn't list there is that the team observed that e even with severely deteriorated imba, the culvert still had a decent amount of load carrying capacity. Uh, and then during our literature review, we looked at ODOT's uh, specification for IMBA paving to see how it's being done. So this on the next slide uh, lists the key features of uh, the ODOT uh, specification. So. Uh, they call for a three-inch thick concrete uh, pavement layer over the imba, and uh, uh, the concrete must have a wire mesh, having a two inches by two inches uh, opening size with wire size of W.9, and the wire has to be of galvanized steel material, uh, and the wire mesh should have a width four inches less than the pavement width, and the wire should be secured, uh, fastened to the conduit uh, along its edges and at the center, uh, every four foot along the length. Uh, and then in some cases, they advise that uh, the contractor uses the uh, uh, chairs or other means to uh, keep the wire mesh uh, somewhat lifted uh, above the uh, uh, surface of the uh, bottom surface of the culvert. Now, uh, my colleague John, he uh, uh, was uh, in charge of conducting surveys. We wanted to know uh, the state of practice related to uh, the IMBA paving for deteriorating metal culverts both within and outside Ohio. So he designed survey forms, and uh, with ODOT's help, we made out these forms to all the county engineers in Ohio, all 12 ODOT districts, and also all the other state DOTs. And the uh, response rates were not great, and usually that's what happens, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, we uh, uh, analyzed the survey data. And here you can see which counties responded, some responses we received from county engineers. I'm going to just go through these. Uh, I believe you can download this uh, presentation, so you can take a look at these more in depth. 
Uh, also, the, this project produced a massive final report, and I believe it's available through ODOT's website. It has many appendices. So one appendix presents all the data we collected through the surveys. But anyway, uh, some uh, observations we made when we collected data from county engineers, only about half of county engineers paved uh, metal culvert inverts. Uh, county, counties in northwest Ohio have never paved their metal culverts, it appears. And uh, uh, most uh, county engineers in Ohio, they stated that they do the inbar paving uh, shortly after the first perforations appear. Uh, and uh, uh, many of them have their own uh, ways of paving the culvert in, but they don't necessarily uh, follow the older guidelines. Uh, so the pavement thickness, amount of steel reinforcement, uh, extent of the pavement, both vertically, horizontally, uh, these factors all vary from one county to another, or from one case to another. But one constant uh, reaction we got is that they're all happy. They, they all feel positively about this rehabilitation method. Uh, some older districts responded to our survey. So this, some of their responses are summarized. Uh, so in contrast to what we found out from county engineers, all the district engineers all follow all dots, it's obvious, you know, standard specification item uh, 611.11, but they deferred uh, in terms of when they uh, paved the IMBA. There are many different uh, opinions about that. Uh, and then at least one district is adding additional steel reinforcement. Again, the older uh, has been calling for just a wire mesh. Uh, but District 8 near Cincinnati, they are adding uh, uh, additional steel rivers. Uh, but again, according to these older uh, district engineers, uh, they are all happy about this rehabilitation method. Uh, state DOTs outside of Ohio, uh, they also provided some interesting uh, responses. Uh, so you can see some samples here. And uh, we only had 25% DOTs responding, and uh, 16 out of these uh, responding state DOTs have paved metal culver inverts. And the state DOTs in arid regions, such as Arizona, New Mexico, had no prior experience in inverting, uh, paving the inverts. Uh, they share different opinions about when the culver inverts should be paved. Uh, and at, third, at 313 state DOTs have developed their own specifications, uh, standard drawings uh, as well. Uh, Inbar pavement thickness commonly ranges from four to six inches. Uh, at least seven of these state DOTs require uh, stars or rivers in addition to wire mesh for reinforcement. Uh, the width uh, or extent of the paving uh, varied uh, also among these state DOTs. Uh, but again, similar to what we found out from uh, surveying county engineers and other district engineers is that uh, the state DOTs, uh, engineers who paved metal culvert inverts all feel positively about this re rehabilitation method. Uh, here's a part of the standard drawings uh, we received from Caltrans. And then a couple of pictures supplied by New Hampshire DOT. Uh, and then this is the uh, sample of standard drawings by New York DOT. So if you can 
uh, access our report, you can also see specifications, standard drawings from uh, some other state duties as well, such as uh, uh, Indiana DOT, Maryland DOT, uh, Minnesota DOT, uh, to see how uh, these uh, DOTs uh, approach in paving differently. Uh, how, I, how am I doing with time? Well, that's it? Oh, shoot. Okay, so I don't have time to go through uh, some of these slides. Okay, so what we did uh, we, uh, so after conducting a literature review, we did some computer simulations to see uh, if they show any improvement, structural improvements, when the culver uh, bottom is paved, severely damaged the culver bottom. So we saw some indications through candy and the uh, Abacus computer simulations, but then we said we really need to go out to the field and do actual testing. So we had uh, this uh, nine foot diameter CMP in Hawking County. Uh, so we instrumented this right under uh, one of the traffic lanes, and uh, its inbar was not really severely deteriorated. So we uh, removed one third of the diameter uh, of the inbar to artificially simulate uh, severely deteriorated inbar and instrument it, and we brought in a heavy uh, a dump truck to apply static live loads. Uh, so we did the first test with the bottom, good portion of the bottom removed. Then, after collecting all the data, the contractor came in and they paved the inbar according to the order specification. Then, uh, some days after the Imba pavement uh, being done, we did another uh, static live load testing. Okay, that's a paving operation, yep. Uh, and you can see here that uh, this uh, CMP's responses to the applied load reduced uh, due to uh, the Imba paving. Uh, Okay, so the blue uh, curve is after the inbar is paved. Black line is uh, before uh, the inbar paving. Okay, so we said we need to do at least one more uh, field testing. So we had the uh, uh, pipe arch culver in Defiance County uh, surfacing as another good candidate. So you can see basic uh, information about this structure. Uh, but this time, we did uh, this live load testing in three stages. Uh, in, uh, in the first test, uh, we tested the culver as it is. Again, its inbar was not really badly deteriorated, and then that's kind of establishing the baseline performance. Then we removed the one third of the bottom to artificially simulate severe deteriorated condition, did another test, and then after paving the inbar, we did the last test. So we can see from this test data uh, whether the inbar paving restored the structural integrity of the structure back to where it was originally. Uh, so you can see again, uh, so the black line is the uh, test number one for the original structure. Red uh, curve represents test number two results. Uh, so the major part of inbar was removed and the blue curve shows how structure responded after its inbar was paved. So you can see uh, structure performance or integrity was restored. And in some cases, even got better than where it was originally. So, so we were really excited uh, when we got this data. Uh, then 
we realize that, okay, so we got some really good data, but these data are not telling us uh, how much ultimate load the structure can take with or without uh, inbound paving. So we have this unique outdoor uh, load frame facility in Athens. So we did a uh, uh, series of four extreme load tests. So we took uh, five foot diameter CMP specimens. In the first test, we just tested as it is. In the second test, we removed one third of its timber. In the third test, after removing one third of its timber, we paved the timber according to the older specification. And in the last test, uh, we did basically the same thing we did for test number three specimen, but we added more reinforcement uh, to see how much difference it makes. And what we found out was, okay, this is the uh, CMP getting ready for test number one. Uh, you can see here, this is for test number two. You can see the middle one third being removed. Uh, this is for test number three, so wire mesh being attached before concreting, okay? And for test number four, we spot where the number four rivers, both circumferentially and longitudinally, and then we place the wire mesh on top of that, then we concrete it. Uh, we did some instrumentations. Uh, so what we found out was that, I think I'm really running out of time, right? Is that, uh, okay, test number one, right, was for establishing the baseline. So this pipe uh, developed a combination wall crushing and wall buckling at a very high load. Okay, test number two, this was, uh, this pipe didn't do very well. So it took about 70% of the load the ammonified uh, specimen took in test number one. So it got somewhat weak. It was a lot more flexible, and also it had the seam splitting, more excessive deflection uh, toward the end. Uh, no buckling, no wall crushing. Uh, and then for test three, uh, as soon as we started applying the hydraulic loading, we had noises that indicate that the uh, concrete pavement was getting detached from the culvert wall. Uh, you can see a huge gap between the Imba pavement and the culvert wall there. Uh, this, okay, this pipe exhibited a combination of uh, uh, failure mode that was exe exhibited by the first and second uh, test pipes. So seam splitting, uh, and then the last test with more uh, steel reinforcement added to the Imba paving, this pipe took as much load as the original unmodified pipe, and they failed essentially in the same way, wall crushing and wall buckling. Uh, so this picture here for test number four looks almost identical to this uh, picture of test number one pipe. So through uh, this test, we saw an evidence that uh, yes, Imba paving can restore the stru culvert structure uh, completely, but you need to uh, do some calculations to determine how much reinforcement you need to place into the Imba uh, pavement. So the final product of this study was an engineering quick reference tables and also engineering procedure based on the ASHTO LRFD design methods uh, that anybody can go through and determine the amount of steel they need to add uh, for the IMBA paving so that they can restore the original strength of the culvert structure. Uh, so basically that's what we did. And uh, I was very pleased with how everything came out. Uh, and uh, 
I'm hoping that many engineers will uh, read our report and uh, start implementing what we came up with. Uh, okay, that's that's all about this presentation. Okay, unfortunately, we're out of time for questions. Um, oh, sorry. Can stop and talk to Terry afterwards. I just will make make one comment on this because. We did create an Excel sheet. It is on the Ohio DOT Office of Hydraulic Engineering webpage that can step you through this process. And the report is also available at Ohio DOT research webpage. So, all right.